Hello everyone and finally welcome back to another episode of Nuclecraft Overhauled. Um, it's been a while, uh, I've been actually working on them quite a lot for the last month or so, um, but term, well half term, pseudo term is about to start again, but I thought I could get these videos done pretty quickly at the weekend and then get them all out of the way, uh, crack on with the work I need to get done. And since I'm home, it means I can actually still work on the mod somewhat, uh, rather than all the other stuff that I'd usually do when I was at university. So hopefully the mod will still be developed slowly over the next two months, uh, but we'll have to see. Um, so as you can see, there's a bunch of reactors over there that have not been sort of built out yet. Um, one of them per video. So there's three reactor videos coming. There's been a lot of new features since this last uh, video that I did on the reactors. Um, I made a few mistakes uh, last time, but hopefully uh, I put comments in all the videos and hopefully you saw them. And I also put a pinned message under the video and also under the planner video that I did even earlier, um, detailing some of the changes that have been made since I made this video. Um, so uh, some of the rules and some of the cooling rates of the sinks got changed. Uh, so there's now some magnesium up here to just make uh, this uh, design stable again. And you can see down there, minus 10. So it's back into that good zone of um, leniency. And one thing that you will notice if you update from version like 2.1.0, I think, 2.0.1.0, or maybe 2.1.0, I can't remember, to the, new, the next version, 2.1.1, and later versions. The latest version now at the time of recording is 2.2.3 or 2.0.2.3. Um, and you'll see that your ports have disappeared. That's because now we have fission cell ports and we also have fission irradiator ports. So all the different ports for all the different types of component on the inside of the reactor have separate ports. That just makes the logic of like working out how they're going to work so much easier. It makes the filtering so much easier. With only one port, the problem was that obviously the recipe system that the irradiator uses and the cells use is different. And so trying to unentangle them in one block is just a bit of a mess. So I instead I just split them up, fission fuel cell ports for cells and irradiator ports for irradiators. And we'll get to those ports in a later video because obviously I haven't actually um, demonstrated the ports yet. I think I, I can't remember exactly um, what how I got the fuel in in the original video, but basically ports have changed since uh, whenever they were first introduced. They can now be filtered uh, and they can now be used for irradiators as well. And they can also be used for vessels for the molten salt reactor and coolant heaters because the molten salt reactor is in. So we'll get to all that at some point. That's all coming down later down the line. This first video is just going to be about the radiation scrubbers. So quite a short one. Um, this got changed quite dramatically, but I never got around to making a video. So I thought I'd just do it very quickly. Um, the scrubber, if you remember from before, is basically a quite expensive way, but it is a sort of basically semi-permanent way of removing radiation from a chunk. So... You can see at the moment the actual radiation here is zero um, and the reason that is is because uh, I have some scrubbers here that have incredibly high efficiency so you can see this one here has got 500% efficiency this one's got 500% efficiency this one's got 100 this one's got 100 so that's 1200 in total um, and the reason that that brings it all the way down to zero is not the same reason as it was before so you'll remember in the sort of original system the old system in pre-overhaul or underhaul as some people are calling it so maybe I'll start calling it underhaul as well uh, each scrubber, when at maximum whack, at 100% efficiency, would remove uh, a certain percentage of the radiation in the chunk. And by default, that was 12.5%. So that would mean that you'd need eight 100% uh, radiation scrubbers uh, to totally remove the radiation from a chunk, or nine that are at sort of the high 90s. And uh, that would get rid of all the radiation in the chunk. It's slightly different now. You can use that old system if you want. Uh, in the configs, but the system that's uh, used by default now is slightly different. It's actually um, an option uh, that's not by default in the underhaul version. So you can turn it on in pre-overhaul and by default it's on in this version. And you can turn on the old system in this, in the configs. And obviously the old system is by default in the old version. Um, so what happens now, it's still a, it's still a similar idea to before. Um, but the, the way that the radiation gets removed near the sort of end of the, of the limit, near the low radiation regime, is a bit different. So before, um, the radiation was removed linearly. So every scrubber was independent of every other scrubber. Each one moved a certain percentage of the radiation in the chunk. Now what happens is at first, at 100% efficiency, you can see there that the scrubber will remove a maximum of 20% of the radiation. Okay, that's in the limit of when not much radiation is being removed. Okay, but what happens is that as the collective contribution from all the scrubbers in the chunk stacks, it will stack non-linearly, meaning that 
after a certain point, the percentages will not just add independently anymore. What will happen is that the radiation level will fall approximately linear at first, but eventually doubly exponentially in the limit of many scrubbers. Now what that means, uh, for those of you who don't know what that means, is that as the scrubbers start to become more and more effective at removing the radiation, the radiation will drop off uh, more and more quickly, but not exactly get to zero. It won't just be a finite, it won't just be a finite cutoff where eventually all the percentages add, off, uh, add up to more than 100. What will happen is that those percentages have uh, less and less of a linear effect and they will quell the radiation more and more and more double exponentially. If you don't know what a double exponential is, go look, about, uh, go look up uh, the Gaussian distribution or the normal distribution and just look at the shape of that function and you'll get an idea of how it sort of drops off very quickly at the edges. Um, so what will happen is that the radiation will just get lowered very, very uh, quickly at those edges, but not sort of at a c finite cutoff. And what's happened here, the reason that the radiation is zero rads per tick in this particular chunk is because Nucleocraft puts a limit on the smallest amount of radiation in the game, and that's one femto rad per tick. So clearly what's happening here is that these radiation scrubbers, which are totaling to 1,200%, are removing enough radiation that the level has gone below one femto rad per tick. And so it's just showing zero. Um, if I had less scrubbers, then that limit would go back up, that uh, amount of radiation would go back up again. So the reason that uh, two of them are removing 100% uh, percent and two of them are removing 500 is because, uh, as you can see, radiation scrubbers now uh, require um, a, uh, I can't remember what I use, I think just to call it agent, cleaning agent, a rad clearing agent at the bottom there. They require a constant source of rad clearing agents. Now, it's not exactly sort of non-renewable. Uh, there are different recipes, so if we look in here, you can see that there are uh, three recipes in the radiation scrubber. One of them is just borax. So borax goes to irradiated borax, lives for five minutes, um, but, the, but it also requires 200 RF per tick, and it has that efficiency multiplier of 100. And that's what these two scrubbers are using here. Um, I've got some borax that is being pumped into the radiation scrubber. Uh, once it is irradiated, it goes into this fluid enricher and to make irradiated borax solution. And then the uh, irradiated borax solution gets washed in this crystallizer to produce uh, pure borax again, and that goes back around in the cycle. So this is effectively a, a renewable source. Once you have the borax, it just stays in the cycle, and uh, this is uh, one way of going about it. The other way of going about it is using Radaway. You can use slow-acting Radaway, or you can just use normal Radaway. To be honest, most of the time, you're just going to want to use Radaway. The slow-acting Radaway actually um, removes uh, more rads uh, over the lifetime of its uh, recipe, uh, but actually the Radaway fluid is so much more effective and most of the time you're going to have enough glowing mushrooms to turn this ethanol uh, back into Radaway again. So again, this is sort of renewable loop, but a bit more complex. So this time you pump in Radaway, um, out comes ethanol, and you have a, some source of glowing mushrooms to turn it back into Radaway and pump back in again. And that has an efficiency multiplier of 500%. So that's very effective, uh, but it only lasts for two minutes, the Radaway, in there, rather than five minutes. Um, so those are your two options. And then the slow, sorry, slow acting Radaway as well, which is far less effective but lasts for much, much longer. So you've got the option of either using a few Radaway or a few Borax or lots of slow-acting Radaway. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. As long as you clear out the radiation from the chunk, you'll be happy. So those are the new radiation scrubbers. Um, hopefully they're a bit more interesting than the old ones. The old ones were kind of a bit weird. Um, another thing that's happened is that the radius of search for these uh, scrubbers, for their... Um, for their clearing distance, so like the, the, scr the scrubbers don't like blocks uh, in the nearby vicinity, they want empty space, um, and the radius of, of checking is configurable. By default, it's uh, under four blocks, so the config says four blocks, but actually what that means, it'll only check blocks that are under, uh, only check blocks that are under a distance of four away. So one, two, three, four, it won't actually check this block down here, it won't check anything around here, it'll only check this one, this one, this one, so i.e. three blocks away and in a sphere around there. Uh, and also you can see here that it's actually saying 100% or 500%. Uh, the reason is because uh, sort of non-full blocks like pipes and things uh, will no longer contribute to the, uh, the penalty of occlusion. So that uh, is probably quite useful for those who are probably quite annoyed. One of the annoying things was uh, before obviously 12.5% times eight meant that you should probably have eight scrubbers, but usually the pipes would like make it slightly less than 100%. Uh, by adding this little thing where it doesn't care about pipes anymore and other uh, non-full blocks, uh, you can get the full 100%. Um, 
pretty happily and you can just set up something like this so this for example is able to deal with the the radiation um, we can actually look in here uh, in this Geiger count you can see the actual radiation near this region is about two or three millirads um, and these four scrubbers are able to to do the job pretty effectively bring it down to to nothing um, so I'd say that's that's pretty decent um, so yeah that's it that's 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 scrubbers in the overhaul um, see so yeah, that's the first video of many to come as uh, as I said uh, thank you all for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.